Yeah, welcome. Um, my name is John uh, Callis. I'm a copywriter at BBH. Uh, before that, I was at Goodby Silverstein in San Francisco. But yeah, I, I want to start um, with, uh, with the topic at hand. Uh, and more specifically, uh, if you recall from the title of the course, um, I told you guys in that title that she knows more about advertising than you do. Um, and I kind of want to explain what I mean by that, why I said that, why I think that's true. I want to make that case to you guys. Hopefully you agree with me. Um, but if not, hopefully it just kind of opens a, another way of thinking about not just advertising, because I understand a lot of you aren't advertising students, but design, creative processes in general. If I were to say your mom knows more about advertising than you do, a lot of you might have um, a specific response to that. You guys are all students, you've studied, or you're studying design, advertising, how can mom know more than you? You know about insights and strategies, philosophies, advertising fallacies. How can she know more than you about, or even me, when I first started doing this, about advertising? And the answer to that, I think, is simple. And it comes from what your mom told you when you were five years old. Um, I don't know if, like, if we start with some mumsy advice, if you guys mind, like just shouting out, what are some of the things that she always told you when you were growing up? Anything, there's no wrong answer here. Don't bite. Don't bite, that's a good one. <laughs> Don't lie. Don't lie, cool. Play nice. Be nice. Play nice. Play nice, yep. Two wrongs don't make right. Say again. Two wrongs don't make right. All good ones. You don't guys don't have... touch anything you see. Don't what? Don't touch anything you see. <laughs> You guys have good moms. Uh, really strong advice. Anything else? <coughs> yeah, I mean, in addition to kind of like all that stuff, um, I think the second answer was, uh, was exactly it. Um, tell the truth. Always tell the truth. And I think there were probably three main reasons why your mom said this to you when you were a kid. I'll go through them and shout out if you disagree, and we'll kind of come back to one of the three um, later on in the talk. But but I think the three are, one, no one likes to be lied to. Uh, I, I don't know if like, that needs much more explanation than that. You know, I think in life, in advertising for sure, in business, in your careers, in relationships, just as human beings, it kind of doesn't feel good to be lied to. I think that like, is pretty self-explanatory. But I think that empathy, that putting yourself in someone else's shoes, and thinking about how you would feel in that opposite situation as basic and as straightforward and as whatever as that sounds, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind throughout this morning and obviously like throughout our careers as well. Second thing, it feels good. That's a little bit different. Yeah, it doesn't feel good to be lied to, but somehow it feels good to tell the truth. I'll come back to this. This is the thing I said I, said I was going to come back to later on. But just come with me on this journey now and just accept that like it feels good. And the third thing, I think, the third reason that your mom told you never to lie is because somehow I think she knew, even at age five, you might go into a course like this, and one sunny July morning you might come to a meeting like this. And I think your mom, when you were five, knew that there was no such thing as advertising without truth. Um, now, I put that up there, and some of you are ad students, a lot of you aren't. So you might have like a very natural reaction to this statement, especially since um, a lot of advertising doesn't seem that way or feel that way. Um, but that's the point. I think that's why people get upset or maybe a little bit skeptical when we say something like there's no such thing as advertising without truth. Because a lot of it doesn't feel true or doesn't seem true or it feels like something else. And like I don't, I don't have any examples of that because I think unfortunately all we have to do is kind of like go outside or crack open a paper or ride the tube and we can see stuff that just for whatever reason doesn't feel right accurate, whatever. If we start, right, with, um, well, how to begin, like, making an ad, whatever it is, a big television commercial, YouTube film, a poster on the tube, uh, ad in the paper, even a little one-liner on Gumtree, they all should start with some tiny element of truth, whatever that is. It's how we know what we want to say, regardless of, like, what we're talking about. Um, how? Well, this is that journey I was talking about. If you come with me on this like, journey of making an ad, they all start with an insight. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. But first things first, this thing better be true. Because if it's not everything else, the foundation on everything is just like false, not going to be good. You're not going to buy it. You're not going to feel good making it. People aren't going to believe it. So this insight 
to start with. That's got to be true, but what should it be about? Mm, this part is up to you as well. And let me press pause for a second. With what we do in a big agency or, or, or just advertising in general, there are a lot of people um, involved in this process. Typically this part, the insight, will be part of a brief that's given to a creative team to crack. So this is not necessarily what a creative team will do like day in, day out in terms of like uh, developing an insight, but it is absolutely the most important part of like making an ad or any kind of communication because that's the it's literally what you're going to say. So even if this is not your um, specific day-to-day -day job and as a creative in an agency you're kind of given a brief uh, that's based on an insight, it's still very much important to uh, believe it, look at it, interrogate it, break it down. We call it sometimes going down the why trail, W-H-Y, because if you keep asking why, at the end of that trail, you'll typically get to something that's true. Once you can't, once you can't ask why anymore, you've basically gotten the answer. But I'll, I'll get to all of this in a second. About the insight, though, when we start talking about ads, what should it be about? It could be about the brand in general. It could be about the product um, specifically that you're talking about. It could be about your target audience, who you want to talk to. Or it could be about people in general. Um, those are all right. Uh, any work can have any insight based on all of those. The closer typically they are to the brand or product, the better. It'll be less generic, it'll feel less uh, disposable because it's like bespoke to what you're talking about. But the big thing is that all of those be true. But the equation is not exactly this simple. If this is the truth that we're starting with and this is the insight that we're just talking about, uh, it doesn't go straight to ads. There's one thing missing in there and of course um, all of you know that it's like right there. Um, that little thing is, is ideas. And just real quick, just to make sure that kind of everybody's on the same page, I know this will seem really simple and straightforward to a lot of you, but I think it's just kind of important to, uh, to ground ourselves. Um, how do we come up with ideas? A good place to start is perspective. And everybody knows what that means in an artistic context, but also in a um, conceptual or intellectual context as an exercise, perspective. We talked about empathy before, right? It doesn't feel good to be lied to. Put yourself in their shoes. Whatever you're saying, try to see it from someone else's eyes, right? Perspective is the same thing. Um, another way to call it is lateral thinking, right? So we have a brand or a product or something we're trying to say. If we want the ad to be satisfying, if we want it to be clever, if we want it to be this thing that makes people feel good, part of that reward is to kind of show how we can think about what we're talking about in a lateral way. And here's um, an absurdly simple illustration. Um, everybody knows what this is. A square. Yeah, square. Um, that's how simple this, this question is. But take a step to the right and a step up, and all of a sudden, well, it's not exactly a square, is it? You know, and that, I think, is as simple as that is, I think it's a good illustration of what we're talking about. It couldn't be more straightforward than that, but that's how we think about um, our brands or our products. Here's one, for example. Everybody knows what this is. You like it, you don't like it, that's great. You may or may not know that it takes longer to pull a pint of one of these than it does a normal lager or any other kind of beer. That's not good, that's not bad, it just is. But one thing it is, is, is true. Okay, cool, so we have that. That's not necessarily strategically interesting. It's not necessarily like amazing like piece of like creative in inspiration, although it could be. But if you take a step back into the right or a step right and up, we could get somewhere like this. He waits. That's what he does. And I'll tell you what. Tick followed tock followed tick followed tock followed tick. Ahab says I don't care who you are, here's to your dream. The old sailors return to the bar. Here's to you, Ahab! And the fat drummer hit the beat with all his heart.
they are still waiting. Just curious, who's seen that before? Most of you, not all of you, yeah. Like it, dislike it? It's a safe space. Anyone can feel free to express their opinion. Yeah. Likes it? Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Like it? Anyone dislike it? Not for you. That's okay. One thing, I mean, if there's anything to take away from this whole talk, it's that we have to be honest with each other, of course, in this room, obviously in um, your careers, relationships, friends, everything. But, like, honesty is the key. So if you don't like something, this or anything that I'm saying, um, please speak up. This thing only works if we're honest with each other. Does anyone dislike it? <laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> Had you seen this before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, cool. You all like it. That's good. But I think that's, I think there was a survey like six or seven years ago, and that was, come on in, um, considered the greatest TV advert of all time. Um, I wanted to show it to you, though, because as uh, artistic and interesting and, you know, that holds up 15 years after the fact, which is, which is nice, too. And if, if all of us can make something that holds up 15 years from now, um, we'll be doing pretty well. But in addition to, like, all of the artistic and creative merit there, it's, it's based on kind of an irrefutable truth that, like, we all know. It takes two minutes to pour one of those down at the pub. And I think that is the key, or one of the keys to why that holds up and why it's so good and why a lot of you liked it. Of course, in addition to how good the actual advert is, that kernel of truth at the core of it, that like irrefutable truth, and that I think is like an important distinction, right? But that irrefutable truth becomes this thing that all of your work, whether it's design, visual communication, any kind of storytelling, obviously advertising, or a conversation that you're having with like anybody in work or in life, that like kernel of truth makes you unstoppable. Anything is like nobody can touch you if you're real. And you kind of know that. And I think your mom knew that when, she, when you were five. And that's why she said it to you. But I wanted to weave this into work because I think a lot of times, this is real easy to say, and it's like real easy for me to kind of stand up here and like tell you all this. But somehow, somewhere along the line, it sort of becomes like easy to forget. Whether it's like an incredibly tricky assignment or maybe a brand or a brief that's like not exactly clear in terms of what they want to articulate, or maybe we're just tongue-tied and literally don't know where to start. We've all had conversations like that, right? Like, don't know what to say. The truth is not a bad place to start. In fact, I think the conversation begins and ends with the truth. So that's kind of the theme. And, and, and to show you that like, it's not just uh, one ad, I kind of want to show you something else. Everybody knows um, this vodka. Uh, but there's a thing, there's a fact about it, actually, that's printed right on the label there. It's triple distilled, literally distilled three times. That, again, is not like a particularly um, creative fact. It's not a particularly like crazy strategic insight. But it is true. It's printed right there on the bottle. And if you start with like a piece of truth like that, you can get somewhere like this. <laughs>
So yeah, that thing at the end said triple distilled and then clearly spurn off. Um, like it, dislike it? Different? Yeah. No one else? I would not like it? Which is not sure. Yeah? It's not that I don't like it. I think comparatively to the last one, it's not got the same fundamental irrefutable truth. Like, they kind of extrapolated it further than waiting. OK. Good things come to those who wait. Triple distilled. Step too far, maybe, with like higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone else? I do like what they've done because they keep taking the bad out. So I see what they're saying when they're stealing more. Mm -hmm. Taking more of the bad out. But I, it wasn't as good as the games. Yeah. Still. Anyone else? Anyone really like it? I, I, I really like it. Um, I agree with you guys um, on, on what you're saying, though. It is like, and that's why I wanted to show that second. It's a good example of like, okay, cool, we can take this truth and now let's apply it as a metaphor to, to life. It is still based on like a product truth, that thing that's like printed on the label, triple distilled, but you know, it kind of sort of feels like to some of you, hey, all right, that's like a bit too far. But this stuff extends to like even like incredibly straightforward truths. Who's heard of Volvo trucks or knew that Volvo made trucks? Uh, you probably have this year, right? No, apparently these trucks are super famous for like driving really straight. And an agency in Sweden got a brief um, for trucks that drive really straight. It doesn't get more straightforward than that. Again, like all the other examples have said, there's nothing like incredibly, there's no strategic leap there. There's nothing incredibly creative or like crazy about our trucks drive straight. But of course, give it the right um, piece of creative, and, and you all know this ad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just another example of like, okay, cool, when what we're trying to say is true, everything opens up like in the creative process. Now, importantly, like I just want to press pause for a second here, and I hinted at it before, but this, this isn't always the way um, it works at an agency. This isn't always the way the workflow works. A lot of times, a creative team, at an ad agency in particular, but I think also at a design agency or even in some other fields, a lot of this like insight and decision making will have been done by the time it reaches you. It will be kind of like determined what it is that you as creators like have to say or interpret. And that's part of why I wanted to talk about this because like in a lot of places and a lot of times like all of this stuff that I'm talking about, have it be based in truth, know what you want to say, have it be based in a, uh, a fundamental reality about the product or people or society or whatever that's kind of decided a little bit for you, or it can be the case at least. And so I wanted to impress this kind of upon you as you're like still in your courses or just starting to work because it's still very much not only in your power but like part of, part of the job to kind of take a step back and say, okay, cool, this whatever it is, this brief assignment, what we're trying to say, is it true? Do I buy it? Can I go down that why trail as I was talking about and get to something that like, okay, cool, no one can refute that. So once you start from there, I mean, not your golden, but like that's such a fundamentally stronger position to start with, to make work that people will be showing in a room here 15 years after the fact, which I think hopefully is the goal, right, for all of us. So I really want to impress that. Like a lot of this is the strategic part, not necessarily the creative part, but if anything, I want to impress that it's all connected. And as creatives, it's very much like our job to kind of, not kind of, to make sure that everything that we're doing is true in some way. And keep going. Um, here's another example that's not trucks or <coughs> alcohol. Do you guys know this, Harvey Nicks? They did like a big um, and great uh, TV advert over Christmas, but equally importantly, they, they sold these products in the store. And I mean, you can see what these are, but that's a sink plug toothbrush, wire sponge, and Christmas lunch in a can. Um, and it says above it, sorry I spent it on myself. Well, this was actually the first thing that you saw in the stores, and everybody knows Harvey Nichols, but selling these kind of like unbranded or home branded, really cheap, one pound 13, 95p, 96p, pound 89. Sorry I spent it on myself gift collection, right? And here's the TV ad that they made to advertise it. Well wrapped as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice decoration. <laughs> Thank you.
Elastic bands? Elastic bands from Harvey Nichols, Dad. Well, sorry, I spent it on myself. Gift collection. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what the range is called. Elastic band gift set. Yeah. Right. Two. Two? I got two. <laughs> oh. Oh. I do hope you haven't spent all your precious money on me, naughty boy. <laughs> Paper clips. Yeah. Harvey Nichols. Yeah. Yeah, they're from Harvey Nichols, so, uh, you know. Harvey Nichols? I don't think anyone's ever got you anything from Harvey Nichols. Wow. Before, so. It's toothpicks. Yeah. You love toothpicks. What is it? It's a sink plug. Hmm? A little something for them, a bigger something for you. Like, dislike? <laughs> Anyone not like it? Good. It's hard. Christmas is hard. Um, it's hard to uh, it's hard to make fun, actually, because deep down, even though we know kind of all the truths and difficulties of Christmas, it's still Christmas, you know. And and there there some ads, you know, try to try to make light out of it, and it fails because, like, ultimately, 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 at Christmas time. We kind of want to be happy. So this one skirts like a very, very, very fine line. What's the, what's the truth behind it? Shout it out. Please don't be shy. You like buying stuff for yourself? Yeah. Anything else kind of related to that? Similar? Christmas makes you skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th those are really the two. And those are, those are, I don't think anybody would disagree with like, you know, each of those. And, you know, there's a couple of other truths in there too. But like that's... That's a cool place to start, you know, and it's certainly a cool place to start for, uh, for a store like, like Harvey Nichols, you know, but true, true but in this lateral way, like, like we were talking about. So it's no surprise that um, that advert and those products are um, successful as they are. Anyone familiar with this tagline? Anyone not? Yeah, I mean, that, that is the, that's the line of the brand in, uh, in America. And that's the basis of their whole campaign. And um, the Super Bowl, which um, everybody knows is like the biggest platform for uh, adverts in America, um, super expensive, super big. It's the one time of year, it happens more frequently, I think, in the UK than it does in the US, but it's the one time of year that everybody is focused on ads and advertising, and it's in the paper, and like everybody's super excited about the ads that are going to come out. Newcastle, not being a huge brand, had a different idea. This is just some screen grabs from the site that they built. Welcome to the mega huge website we could afford for the mega huge football game ad we couldn't afford. And there's like this other super specific thing in America, if you're not an official advertiser, you can't even use the word Super Bowl. But they did this whole concept, this whole campaign about the fact that they couldn't afford a Super Bowl commercial. So there were these drawings and there was a big teaser for it and they ended up producing six or seven or eight pieces of film that were just animated storyboards with like over the top music and a voiceover all about the fact that they couldn't afford to make a Super Bowl commercial. And they had movie stars and American football stars in it. And it became really interesting to my point before about when an idea is good and you know that a core idea is good, then you could do this and you could do this and you could do this and you could do this. After the game, they took every single commercial that was on during the game and made how we would have made that commercial. But all of this is based on the fact that like Newcastle is not big in the States. It's not popular in the States. They couldn't afford a Super Bowl commercial. Frankly, like a lot of people know them, but not a lot of, you know, it's not a household name or a household brand in America. Right? And the core idea, no bollocks, applies to everything they do. So another, I think, good example of all of these are of perspective, like we were talking about, lateral thinking, square to the cube. And most importantly, these things based in 
this. So I hope some combination of those and, and what I've said have kind of convinced you that truth equals good ads or can lead to good ads. But really, let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, remember the three reasons from the start that I think she told you to tell the truth, right? It was no one likes to be lied to, the empathy thing we get. It feels good to tell the truth, that we get as well. And the third thing, there's no advertising without truth. Well, I hope that I've made this case through those examples and like what I'm saying. But if I could, I'd like to go back to like number two as well. Because I think this is just like a, to me, this is a nice wrap up to like all of this stuff. So the truth is fundamentally important. But this part is also important for ads and for creative work of any kind, I think. But specifically, design, visual communication, visual storytelling, advertising, that sort of thing. And the reason it's important is this. If you agree that it feels good to tell the truth, right? Maybe you agree that that makes you happy, right? Cool. So you could say that your mom told you to, tol told you to always tell the truth because she wants you to be happy. All right. Maybe you buy that, maybe you don't. But I want you to be happy too, personally, all of you guys in the room. And here's why. It's because I really do think that happier creatives make better work. I do think it's that simple. And that makes sense, right? Uh, happier anything would make better whatever it is you make. But I think it's vitally important with what we do because I think fundamentally advertising is there to make people happy. Of course we have like business goals, objectives, we want to tell stories, we have uh, measures right to our success, sometimes very like um, financially based measures. But ultimately, right, the only way somebody's going to choose Bacardi over Captain Morgan's, Pepsi over Coke, is if they feel good about that brand when it comes time to choosing that at the point of purchase, as it's called. All right, now if you're going to do that, if you're going to agree that making people happy is the only way to rate, or one of the only ways to make really successful advertising, and you've got to be happy yourself. That's, that's our jobs, you know? Advertising is kind of like an uninvited guest, right? Nobody seeks it out, maybe us because we're students, you know, but really nobody seeks it out. If you have something that's like rewarding on the tube, a good poster, or something in the newspapers, you're, you know, you feel, you feel happy. It's an uninvited guest the same way like people can be uninvited guests, you know? And like anybody that shows up on your door unannounced and wanting to stay, <coughs> Better be charming, better have a couple of funny stories to say, and better leave before he or she outstays their welcome. I think that's really important to remember. It's the same. You know, and small talk between people is the same as small talk between brands. You know, I guess there's a time and place for it, but that can't be all you have to say, right? So tell the truth. It feels good. You'll be happy. Your ads will be better. That will make other people happy, including and especially your mom. Um, Thank you guys, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to share with you today. So.